Hey guys, it's Tom Box from MSD.TV, and if you guys are wondering where Sam is, he's probably in the middle of the ocean enjoying some R&R on VKK, so he called me up and I've come bringing gifts of Dreamers. This is not gonna be your standard deck profile. This one is a little bit different. I'm gonna go into the weaknesses of this deck first. If you guys have watched some of those automated duels online about this deck, it's like, oh, is this deck even viable? You would have noticed one like very key pattern. It doesn't demonstrate how good this deck is. It only demonstrates how bad a lot of those opponents are and how they just misplay out of like everything. It's like, oh, okay. And then they just somehow do the wrong move, especially when they know that there's a Dream Mirror Fantasy and they just like let the thing banish their, their key card. Yeah, but I found a win con in this deck that I'm personally enjoying. Uh, making my opponent very frustrated. First of all, it's lacking consistency. It's a field spell based deck, but these field spells, they do not generate any type of plus for you. So if you have multiple copies of these field spells and you're playing like six total field spell, if you open all field spell, you have an insta brick. You basically lost the game before the game even started. So that's a problem already. But these level eights, they're also a problem because they can be summoned out through uh, the Dream Mirror Mara or this Dark Ikalos. And uh, if Dark Ikalos can summon them out, that's great. That means you have to open with these. Another problem with this is they're typing. They're light fair, like level one fairies. Level one fairies are hard to summon out because fairies don't exactly have a lot of support to summon them out quickly out of the deck. They have support like Nova Summoner, but that requires a battle destruction. They have Shining Angel to get out the lights. Shining Angel, in fact, is one of the cards I am running in the deck, just so I can fetch out either Morpheus or Echolos. And then if I have a Dream Mirror, I get to do some tagging. That's one of my personal techs into this deck that I don't think anyone else is using because it's still, honestly, it's like old Yu-Gi-Oh. This is like a tech from the past, but it is possible to still use it because a lot of people just like, oh, whatever, like there's no consequence in, to ramming into these monsters. In terms of other types of opening play issues, if you open any combination of these four, it's really bad because these are not summonable. They don't have summoning conditions that are easy to be met. They rely on the level ones to start the play. So if you open with all the big dudes and a bunch of mirrors, you're still dead. And uh, even if you open with the trap, you need to control a dream mirror monster to activate this trap. So you have to control the dream mirror monster, target one of each of your banish uh, dream mirrors, joy and terror and then shuffle into the deck and if you do banish one card on the field. Oh, that's a great effect. But that means you need to have a level one dude to begin with or some way to summon out a level eight. And then you also need a mirror to end phase, tag out two mirrors so that you have the ability to meet the cost. I mean, the effect of this card is pretty good, but it can also easily be played around. If you just kaiju one of your monsters, it's over. Your, your back row is basically dead as well. So lots of problems. And if you want to get an opening play, the only good opening play unfortunately is that you need to open the dark sprite with a light mirror so that you can get a search and then when you tag the mirror onto the dark you'll be able to summon this dude and that's basically it otherwise even if you open with the light dude with a dark mirror what are you going to summon out if you have nothing else already in your hand in other words you have to open like multiple good cards in your hand to successfully get a decent opening turn and that's why i find that this deck has a lot of consistency issue when it comes to the opening turn and therefore i had to flood the deck with other cards in terms of how can konami fix this first problem with the deck is these field spells they do not generate pluses give us some way to generate a plus and search out uh, one of the level ones straight to our hand or summon it onto the field and rather by either by banishing it because banishing it fuels the fuels the um, the cost of dream mirror fantasy or you can have us put it back into the deck so we don't have to run so many copies there's two ways of going about this another way is that you give us another card another field spell except that this field spell lets you tag into either of these so it's kind of like the middle ground that lets us get access and when you play that card it lets us search for one of these monsters or give us a decent trap or decent spell that just e tellies one of these guys out because without it it's very difficult to play this deck entirely i don't know how i'm supposed to play this because these guys are very conditional like that's one way to kind of fix a deck and I don't know, maybe give us another monster. If you give us another monster, perhaps a level four, I would be pretty happy so that we have more opening plays to play with because right now we're very limited. Okay, to kick off the build, we have Triple Morpheus, Dream Mirror, Black Knight. This is your popper. You want them in your hand because they're really useful if you can actually tag an Amara through an effect and then you can summon one out and just pop a card. That is a very nice effect, to be honest. And uh, since you pop any card, it's a decent utility. But aside from that, you don't get any value for normal summoning up this card whatsoever.
whatsoever. Then we have the Dark Ikalos. We have uh, Dark Ikalos, the Dream Mirror Mara. This one lets you uh, summon out one from your hand and it counts as a Dream Mirror effect. So it does proc their effect as well. Three of because you need to open with it in order to get any sort of Dream Mirror opening play. Next, I play two copies of the Light Morpheus. Why not max out? Okay, this card has a very pretty artwork. And in fact, it looks like lightning from uh, Final Fantasy 13. It looks like lightning from, well, 13 2 if you want to look at the armor. But like, this is a very beautiful card. Unfortunately, the effect is just kind of pedestrian. Uh, it lets you protect uh, herself from battle or card effect when she's summoned out through a Dream Mirror effect. It's decent, I guess. And with the light mirror, it's forced to attack this or it's forced to target this, which can protect itself. But it's not like immune to card effects or anything. It's kind of still weak because you can still bounce it. Yeah, just immune to destruction. <laughs> kind of lackluster in my opinion. Then we have triple light Ikalos, the dream mirror sprite. This one lets you... Um, search for any dream mirror card which is very useful but opening with her in your hand does not give her any value you want the opposite color with the opposite color mirror the white mirror and the dark eclos is the more ideal opening so that you can actually get some remnants of a play and uh, that's basically it the problem is they're all level one fairies which just makes it very difficult to tag out yeah, you guys let me know if you find some way to bring these monsters off. I've considered using damage condensers, but being a trap, it's very difficult to use it because you don't get very much value out of them, uh, especially when your opponent can just pop them uh, later on once they figure out what you're building. Then I'm playing as my own tech, Shining Angels. Wow, such an old card. Do you guys even remember with these guys, these, these uh, recruiters? If they're destroyed by battle, of course, you get to special summon out a monster that's light that is 1500 attack or less. Luckily, both Morpheus and Ikalos are both weak enough for the Shiny Angels to work. I previously, now not in my current build, but my previous build, I played Creature Swap because that was a classic tech where you, my opponent made a Boral Sword and I gave him a Shining Angel and actually killed him through it because I tagged out um, the Morpheus uh, I tagged the Morpheus, I swung into them for a thousand, and then I tagged the Morpheus out for the Dark Morpheus, swung for another 28, then Boral Sword switched it back to defense, and then attacked again. So that was one way I achieved an OTK with this deck, which is kind of more reliant on the Boral Sword than anything. So if you can get out quick uh, Link 4s, by all means go for it, but I have a different kind of win con that's a little bit more fun in, in my taste, and I like making my opponent feel really annoyed because I have problems dealing with any kind of monster you put out. So next, I have a couple level 8s. I have Darkest Diablos because a lot of these effects require tributing to tag a monster out. And the other card I'm running, because I'm not... This is a budget variant, by the way. So uh, this is Chaos Emperor Dragon. But if you have the money, if you have the money, by all means, put two Chaos Dragon Levianir in there. If you want to drop the money for this particular deck, then yeah, because this is still Chaos variant. It's very easy to load up your uh, graveyard with lights and darks. But Chaos Dragon that we knew does require an extra material, which you you might find yourself suffering. But like, if you can get triple light, for me, triple light is more value than the triple dark because I'm gonna kill my opponent with the triple light effect, uh, <laughs> because that's what I like to do. But if you can use Chaos Dragon Levy in here, that's not bad. And one of the variants to give it a bit more consistency, you can even try. Uh, uh, the Dragon's Awakening, uh, whatever that, that, that spell card is. And um, yeah, that will help you fetch out two dragons. You guys kind of know what I'm talking about, right? Now onto the spells, because terraforming is at one, now you have to play one terraforming, uh, because it's a field spell, that's you get whatever you're missing. Triple Dream Mirror Joy, because you don't have a choice. I can You can actually cut it down to two if you're playing the field spell, but you have to get lucky and get the, uh, sorry, not the field spell, but the trap. If you get the trap, then you're good. Same with Triple Dark Mirror, because it fuels it up. And to survive, we play one Mystic Mine. In fact, you can play three Mystic Mine in here and it still wouldn't hurt the deck because you use it to stall until you can OTK your opponent. Uh, this, and it's a field spell based deck. Why would you not play it? Now in terms of consistency, what about all those brick hands? So if you're playing budget, play trade in. If you're not playing budget, play pot of extravagance. I'm playing budget because I don't want to throw money into this deck. I'd rather put all my pot of extravagances somewhere else like, I don't know, you tell me, whichever deck that plays it. I'm playing double super poly because I have super poly targets and because I'm playing trade in, I get to kind of maximize on not losing all my super poly targets. 
Double call with the grave because you're really weak to ash. You can get ash on your tagging effect, which really sucks. Uh, one monster reborn, and I'd like to revive my dudes because my dudes have no value otherwise. One one for one because you get this special summon to level one, and that's one of your only tether cards. Uh, and then we have one metaverse to make sure that you can have some interaction against your opponent, or you can get out that uh, mystic mine. Now in terms of my other trap lineup, triple crackdown. I like stealing my opponent's monsters for my OTK, and uh, it opens the OTK up pretty nicely. I need bodies. Okay, my combo here is that I need four bodies. Two of them level eight and I can kill my opponent. That was my goal. It's worked a couple times, so I'm still sticking with it. Double call of the haunted. And because I just need to revive about the bodies. I just need level eights back. And if I use trade in, I can actually set this one up pretty nicely. And I'm not really that afraid of my monster getting like screwed over, especially when I can tag it out with a mirror. That's fine. And I played two copies of Dream Mirror Fantasy. I played three before and I really got annoyed because I opened with a card, but I couldn't activate it so many times because of the ratios. I tried cutting it down and then to a point that I just don't even see it very much. So two is my number right now because Crackdown, I'd rather play traps that just work by themselves. Okay, for my extra deck targets, I have uh, two copies of Venom Fusion Dragon and one Mud Dragon of the Swamp. That's for the Super Polys. As for my Link monsters, one Link Rebo and a bit of a Nightmare Package, a Nightmare Phoenix and a Unicorn. I know I'm supposed to be budget, but I already have these, so if you can fill it up with whatever that you need, just this is what I'm using. I don't think it really matters. What does matter is you do need a Link 2 that has two corner arrows because that's part of my OTK. Or you can have a Link 3 that does the same thing. If you don't have that, you can definitely just play Decode Talker instead. Like Whatever cheap options you have, uh, by all means just go for it because you're not really going into your extra deck very much with this particular deck. But I also have a Boral Sword in here just because I found it uh, <laughs> in the deck box. But you can go into this. That is an option. Um, if you want to go for an OTK, that just enables like any other deck that runs a Boral Sword. But in terms of my fun tech that I really enjoy using my opponent's monsters to fuel this combo is I play number 97, Draglubian. Why would you not play this card? This card's freaking hilarious. So if I want to punch through multiple monsters, then I will go through Chaos 107 and uh, 107. So these two together, I get to attack three times and uh, that should be enough to kill most people. And the other one, remember you can actually summon out Hope Harbinger through the effect of Draglubian and it will have a material. So uh, even if it didn't have a material, it can still absorb a spell. So that's still very valuable in my opinion. Uh, but the other card that I do not have, that this is what this card is supposed to be, and this is supposed to be number 100, Numeron Dragon. I don't have it, so I'm playing a second copy of uh, Hope Harbinger, but Numeron Dragon will give you the 8k by itself, so you can just punch for game. And if you somehow resolve this card effect twice, which is very much possible, uh, you can push it to like 17 thousand attack points i did it once against like a blue ass chaos max player so i was pretty happy about that he died and he was like what the what just happened and uh i'm like you just got screwed over by dream mirrors buddy but that is the extra deck in terms of the combo it's pretty simple really okay we're gonna show you guys some opening plays uh let's see well this this hand kind of sucks but if you open something like this it was just kind of typical to be honest it happens like maybe one every four games if you have the opposite mirror then you'll activate the dream mirror of terror summon out the ikalos you're gonna tag it out and we're gonna summon out the mara right away effect of that summon this dude out and therefore uh, this is actually kind of awkward because you also have dream mirror fantasy if you want the dream mirror fantasy to go through you're gonna have to tag the mirror out twice and you can do that during the end phase. There's nothing against it. Each mirror is once per turn. Uh, but because of that, you won't be able to tag out your monster during your turn. So that's the limitation that you're throwing in. But if you want to be able to tag monsters, you have to make the choice. You have to just banish one mirror into the joy. And therefore during your opponent's turn, you can go ahead and start converting into pluses. Uh, if you want to control your opponent, then uh, go for the fantasy where you just do a double tag. If you want to gain pluses and protect your board and protect your cards, uh, then you go for the Mirror of Joy. Uh, you go ahead and tag this, and you get yourself another copy of Ikalos, and Ikalos is going to give you that search, and then you can tag this out, 
and then you can summon this. This becomes a target magnet because Joy is there, and uh, that kind of puts them in a bit of a rougher spot. And that lady should recover. But you can see that the plus generation is very slow with this deck. Uh, and the control is just kind of minimal. And let me just show you the thing that I do with all those crackdowns that I play in this deck. Okay, so this is the other combo that I use to kill my opponent uh, quite frequently. So if you have a dark mirror with two light monster, it's pretty good because you can extend pretty far. Uh, this is the kill combo where you can put four monsters out, and once you put four monsters, you can do an OTK. Uh, I don't have the, the the kill card, but I'm just gonna say it is the kill card. The kill card being Numeron Dragon. This play here is very dangerous. So you summon out Ikalos, and then use the mirror, or better yet, use her own effect, and you tag out the Dream Mirror Mara onto the field. Using the Mara effect, you summon out Morpheus, the light one. And now you're going to go ahead and activate a Crackdown, take one of the Blue Eyes White Dragons, that can't attack, but that's fine, activate Call of the Haunted, revive the other level 8, and uh, from here, you're going to tag this Morpheus out, that one that you just summoned out, because you still have the Dark Mirror, and because you have the Dark Mirror, you get to summon out a Dark Knight. Where are you? There you go. Onto the Dark Knight. Dark Knight effect will pop the other monster that's on the field. Uh, you don't have game just yet because it's just not possible. So instead, rather than doing that, I just link off with his Blue Eyes White Dragon and my Mara. And I go into Cyframe Lord Lambda. I take these two. Go into Draglubian. The glue being effect detach and I went for chaos 138 and then I went to number 100 and then I detach putting him at 8,000 and just attack for game. So that was one of the kill combos you have. So all it takes is eight monsters. If your opponent still has monsters left on board then you don't have to go here. You can switch it up. You can go for the this instead and then detach and then you can swing three times and it's uninterrupted. You can make three up to three attacks at 4,500. Two attacks over anything that is below a thousand is instant game. So that's the other way to kill someone with this combo, which is a four monster, technically two monsters that is any level and two monsters that are at level eight and you can kill your opponent through it. That's the OTKs I'm currently playing with and I like to steal my opponent's monster to do it because they're like, oh, I've got these great monsters on the field. Nothing can hurt me. Well, what if I steal it? with a crackdown or steal it with a super poly and just ruin it and like you can just super poly them out after this is still a dark so at the put another dark and just super poly this one out and you still have a zone available so that is it for this video guys i know there isn't like too many exciting combos that you can put out with this deck because this deck has a lot of limitations if you guys want to show I guess show Sam and show me something about this deck that we are currently not aware of well leave it down in the comment section below I'd love to read through your comments even though this is his video don't forget to smash that thumbs up button and check out msd.tv it is currently now 3 a.m. and I'm still making a video for Sam I'm really exhausted I gotta go to work in about five hours so you know good luck to that if you guys enjoyed this video well, go check out msd.tv. I'm really hoping that Konami fixes this archetype. With such beautiful artwork, it's such a waste. Is there another archetype that has like really nice artwork but completely wasted effects? Also leave that down in the comment section below. Well, that's all I got for this one. So I guess I'll see you guys in the next one or over at msd.tv. Ciao, guys.